good morning and thanks for tuning in to American Garage. We have a new addition to our shop. We just took in a 76 Toyota Land Cruiser. So let's go in the shop and go check it out. All right, follow me. <laughs> All righty, and there she is. Just took her in. She's sporting a small block Chev, but uh, she needs some help. We got brake issues. Uh, second gear is popping in and out, probably a synchro. It's a stick. And then uh, the EFI is just not working properly and he wants to go ahead and get rid of the exhaust manifolds and get some headers in here. The only thing they have is block headers. Redo the mufflers, because they're basically Titanic and look at that two inch pipe. So I'm gonna represent, let's see inside. He just bought this, he's owned it for maybe six months. And then we also have some brake issues. And then check the um, e-brake because it doesn't really want to roll. So she came in EFI. Um, it's not running right. It's an MSD. Um, we're just going to throw a carburetor on it. But what concerns me is it's a used bone stock engine with only 95 compression throughout the cylinders. It's pretty consistent, but these things should be pushing about 125, 150 stock. However, they've got that high rise uh, manifold on there and somebody stuck a JEGS label, actually aluminum level uh, uh, or plate, glued it on there and put a JEGS decal on there. So. Chances are that's not Jegs. I don't see Edelbrock on there anywhere, so most likely it's um, Taiwan. It's a repop. Um, I think Professional Products makes um, a lot of stuff like that. So, and again, we they, this truck just came to us yesterday. We didn't build it, but it runs like doo doo, and it breaks like crap as well. Okay, so. You just rounded off the numbers. And then you waited a minute or so and yeah. it didn't drop. Yeah. So we're not bleeding. However, those plugs are built up. They're fouled. Mm -hmm. We're going to get a fresh set of plugs. Those are stock steel heads. So that's going to, I like the auto like. We're going to go with a 26. Uh, I got new wires coming in. Gotcha. The distributor, the carburetor. But for right now, if you'd like, like I said, leave this off. Go ahead and take off and dismantle. See that? What? Yeah, that's not locked down. All right, take this off again, leave it off, and remove the uh, EFI, the throttle body. Gotcha. And also, I'll have Andy assist you with disabling the wiring, okay? We're gonna put the Holly on there, the carburetor, and the 600 CFM, that's all you're gonna need. And for those of you wondering how to select a carburetor for your application, that's just it, it's your application. What do you have to work with? Well, she's a bone stock, uh, 350 Chev. Um, three stroke. It, no, seriously. Uh, let's see. We have a, a driver's side dipstick. This right here is an indication. Uh, this is an earlier model. Uh, sometime around 80, 82, right around that era, um, they went to passenger side. So that right there tells you one thing. And it's going to the block uh, equally as it does on the passenger side. The casting number, which we don't have access to, it's uh, it's embossed into the casting, and right back here on the driver's side of the block, 
Um, that will tell you a ca show you a casting number. You can look that up, and it'll tell you where, when it was manufactured, and what block it is. So this right here tells me uh, Charlie thought it might have been a 305 without even inspecting it. You can't tell unless you check your casting number, but in this case, you got a driver's side did stick. They didn't make 305s back in that day. They're already on the passenger side, so it's not a 305. It's most likely a 350. Now, whether or not this was rebuilt in the past, uh, the gentleman just bought it, so as usual, they don't have a lot of information on it. Um, it's, it's only as solid as the previous owner told him so. So anyways, we're gonna put a carburetor on there and the way to check uh, to factor your carburetor, it's displacement times your max cam output uh, revolution, your RPM. So in this case, we figure hydraulic flat tap at cam, it's probably 5,200 or so. You take 5,200 times 350, or if this was bored out 30 over, that means it's a 355. So whatever the displacement is, you multiply that times the high rev of the cam. You get a number. Then you multiply that, I refer to as engine pi. It's real easy, three, four, five, six. When you get that number, you're going to get a CFM rating, uh, a number, a value. Um, 600s, generally, we don't go below. Uh, we can go ahead and change the power valve. We'll show you that later when we adjust the carburetor, how to set the uh, air fuel mixtures, set your idle, set your throttle position, and set the power valve. Power valve simple. It's going to be when you establish, go through your valves, and you're at uh, an adequate idle. For this case, this thing, oh, about 650 to 750 for a stock cam. No more. And there's no automatic, it's a stick, so there's not going to be any load on it. So you have the ability to increase your, uh, your RPM, pop the clutch out, and get up and go. But still, performance is still, it's still everything. So aside from that, um, we're going to pop that on. And getting back to the calculation of CFM, in some cases we're bigger models. Let's say you're going to go full-blown race, you got a 1050 Dominator on there. And you just leave it alone that's it because you're going to be going wide open but if you're looking for more fuel economy fuel efficiency holly themselves will tell you to multiply that by drop it by 10 or 15 percent all you got to do is take that value you get and multiply it by point um point nine or point eight five of course point nine means you've 10 percent of that's 10 percent of off of 100 percent right so that's only gonna be 90%, a 10% drop. So if you're like 657 and you multiply by 0.9 and be it a stock motor as I've explained, and you multiply that by 0.9, you get like 603, then 600 is perfect. That's how you select your carburetor. Every motor, like a human being, breathes differently. You can have some fat, unhealthy SOB trying to hike up a hill, huffing and puffing after the first 20 seconds versus somebody young and fit and will just fly up that mountain. So application is everything. All right, Charlie, let's get some tools and remove this. That's a half inch. All right, well guys, we're gonna, while we're doing this, we'll catch up with you in a moment. You know, for any viewers out there or someone that doesn't have access to the States, um, Feel free to give us a call. My name's Jim, 770-932-8401. No, I'm not, I'm not single, I'm, I'm married. But don't call me for that. <laughs> call, call me to inquire, Jim Speed Shop, to inquire uh, our email. If you'd like to email us, it's jimsspeedshop at yahoo.com. That's J-I-M, the letter S, and then the word speed. So that's two S's back to back after Jim. And then the word shop, S-H-O-P, at yahoo.com. Again, I'm your host, Jim. Thanks for tuning in to American Garage T uh, TV. And we s truly, truly um, hope that you'll like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit the bell for further videos and more video content. We've got a lot to share with you. It's overwhelming. I know because the cameraman always tells me and reminds me. <laughs> so again, I'm your host, Jim, Jim Speed Shop. Thanks for tuning in. We'd love to see you the next time.
catch you in the next video. Thanks.